Thanks for listening to Uncle Sam's Soccer Podcast, keeping you up to date with the latest in American soccer. And don't forget to subscribe. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Uncle Sam's Soccer Podcast. And yes... We are back-to-back world champs. On today's episode, we're talking U.S. Women's National Team and their glorious 2-0 win over Holland in the World Cup Final. You know the drill. Follow us at Unc Sam Soccer Pod. Hit that subscribe button. Leave us a five-star review. It's the normal lineup. It is I, Steve Jodoran, Jake Wachoba, Armand Kafai, and boys. It's raw emotion here. We're recording right after the Women's World Cup Final. Listeners will have more about the U.S. women later this week as we'll get more audio and in-depth analysis. But today's episode is just really raw emotion. And guys, what a performance. What a team. Back-to-back world champs. It's, it's coming a- home. It's coming home. That's, a, <laughs> I guess, for women's soccer, it, that's the like, U.S. is the home. I mean, it was a, a phenomenal display. I mean, I, there's nothing really much you can say outside of they dominated and they, they backed up all their talk. What, what else can you really say at this point? I agree with I agree with what Armand said. They they walk the walk, they talk the talk, and I mean, if we're looking at the match, the first forty five, it was kind of a little nervy at times. It looked like the U.S. was having a hard time break down, breaking down the Netherlands. But once that once they came out at, at, at halftime, it was all USA all the way. Think about it. Jill Ellis is vindicated with her decisions. All the players are. Their their style, their play, the 13 goals against Thailand and their celebrations. It's meaningless, but they get to laugh back at everybody who mocked it. Jake, you and I have to write an apology letter now. I mean, it is one of the greatest performances by a team in any competition. The U.S. women just steamrolled everybody. We said it a lot last episode when we were talking about the U.S. I, I listed all this, these insane stat lines. Guys, I, this team is unstoppable. I don't foresee anybody stopping them because unlike the men, guess what happened today? A whole new generation of young women are inspired. This is what the World Cup does. This is why missing it out in 2018 by the men is going to screw the team up in as a, in the future generations. The U.S. women right now have a pipeline of talent coming their way. Because they just inspired the entire nation, but also a, a whole new generation of footballers. Yeah, no, honestly, I mean that, but and that's been like the main message. But I mean, sure they inspire, but I mean they also like Roosevelt is like relatively young, like there's a bunch of young She's stars a on this team. All Woo-hoo. right, all right, all right. Stephen with his now he can flaunt his uh, Wisconsin Badger instead of his New England Patriots today. Uh, but <laughs> I, no, I could I, mean, I could spit it doing the Patriots way if you want me to. No, really no, no, good. we're good. We're good. No, please, please don't. Please, please. I'm like begging you, please. Let's 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 avoid that. But they have so many younger stars as well. I mean, sure, you're not going to say they're Rapinos or whatnot. But I mean, when Abby Wambach left, everyone's like, oh, wow, no more Abby Wambach. Like, she was kind of the face. I mean, there'll always be a new face stepping up. And sure, it could be a generation. But I mean, you have, what, Mallory Pugh on the bench, a couple others that, you know, can, can come up into a system as well. Like, they're just loaded with talent. 2023, I know, I know 2019 just in the World Cup, but 2023, they're going to be back. They're going to be even more loaded than – they could be even more loaded than before. The parade's going to be Wednesday, 9.30 Eastern time in New York City. going to be a fantastic parade. I definitely wish to be there. But, Jake, this U.S. women's national team just dominated and they shut up their doubters. It, it's just really hard to reflect back and say anything negative about this team. No, you're right, it's especially when talking about dominance. I mean, the U.S. women's national team broke the record today for most goals scored in a World Cup with 26. Granted, half of those came against Thailand, but you get the point. They were the most dominant team in the tournament. I mean, we can look at another stat here. The Netherlands ha- held the U.S. scoreless to start the match longer than any team they had faced prior to the final. Uh, fun, funny enough, Thailand 
who didn't concede a goal until the 13th minute against the U.S., had held the U.S. scoreless to open a match longer than any team before today, just to provide a little context. <laughs> wow. They, uh, the U.S. were just getting warmed up. My God. It's just unbelievable what this team had done. Listeners at Sam Soccer Pod, question of the day. Let's just actually jump straight to the point of what this tournament will do going into the future. What impact will this have on U.S. soccer as a whole? Well, if we're talking strictly, you know, NWSL and women's football, I'm I'm very actually skeptical of it, to be honest with you. And it might be a very unpopular take, but the NWSL hasn't done enough to grow the game outside of, you know, trying to capitalize on these World Cup years. Uh, it's kind of been, you know, a little bit of incompetence, a little bit, you know, of, of a lack of exposure. They're, they've had teams contracted. Like, things just aren't right. And, you know, whole, there's this whole thing. I mean, you guys know about it, how Barcelona wants to put a team in the NWSL. But the NWSL is like, no, because of, like, a shirt sponsor conflict or something like that. There's a lot of incompetence going on with the NWSL. And I'm not really optimistic. I mean, sure, you got that Budweiser deal coming in. Uh, you might you have a new deal with ESPN, but I'm not really optimistic that you know this will bring it up as a as a whole. There has to be so much more done. There has to be so much more exposure, so much more like more competent owners. Like there there has to be more, Stephen. Like there there it, you can't just be like, oh, they won the World Cup. Now people are gonna come. There but has to be more. You gotta give for, people a reason. You're forgetting something. The European leagues are still better. I, in my opinion, well, no, 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 from, and this is, this is not from my opinion. This is opinion of other people who cover women's football. They don't agree. They, the NWSL is the best league and maybe they have a bias, but if it's like, you know, five or six people saying the same thing, I'm like, I agree with that. I, the, no, I, what I'm talking about is the infrastructure in the European game is coming along at a quicker rate. I mean, the the world record attendance for women's club soccer is... Atletico Madrid. The, the investment is there. And what I'm saying is, yes, I know we kind of mocked how Spain is four years away. But in some sense, it is very much true. The, the, the thing is, people are going out to the games there. The, the attendance in stadiums is high. And it's only going to get higher. I mean, look at what Manchester City are doing with their women's game. They're investing into it. So, yes, the NWSL might be might be the best league currently, but that's going to change. I really do. You know why? And, and, and this is a problem that the men and women are going to face is the soccer in America is fifth. In some markets, it's probably third. Maybe in other markets, it's it's two. But generally speaking, soccer is held as the fifth major sport. Guys, I'm going to jump in here because I think you both are missing the mark here. I don't think it matters if this World Cup win accelerates NWSL's growth. I don't think that matters for the U.S. women's national team to have continued success four years from now or eight years from now or 12 years from now. Because what's going to happen is if the European leagues continue to grow and get bigger, all the American talents is going to go go to Europe. This What, what you're going to see is the U.S. will become like uh, like Brazil in the men's game, where all the top talent is exported over to Europe. I don't think it matters. And I think this win will inspire U.S. soccer uh, in terms of the next generation of players, I, boys and girls. No, I think this was but, a, ma- a massive step Jake, forward for U.S. soccer as a yes. whole. And I don't think NWSL – I don't think it matters if NWSL is successful for the – maybe for the women's game in this country. Yes, you need that to – grow but if we're talking about the national team down the line i don't think it matters well the u.s is producing talent at an absurd rate and they are just by far superior athletes my worry is that if the nwsl does not step up and invest in it you're going to start to see the european leagues gain traction and you'll slowly have a trickle of american players go over there but you're never going to see the domestic league in America grow. And in, in, in 15 to 24 years, where will the U.S. stand when it's competing against 
a, a Holland who clearly is taking a page out of the U.S. playbook because what did they tweet before the game? Jake, you showed you showed it to me. I think it was it was a it was a cool way of illustrating respect, but also showing some competitive edge. Is how the the Dutch team and Dutch football looked at U.S. and, and what they have done with the women's game and said, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but an homage, an um, or, yes. uh, homage to the U.S. women's national team. For what they have done, and rightfully so, but the point being is that we're coming to get you. We want to be world champs. That's the goal. And I, I, I do worry whether or not U.S. soccer as a whole has the mindset and the mental capacity to actually figure out what the hell is everyone else doing. Yes, we're sitting on back-to-back champs. I don't want to take anything away from it, but... Winning masks a lot of issues, and U.S. soccer have a lot of issues. This is the greatest PR thing they could have is having them be world champs because for the next six months, you could all, all they have to say is back-to-back world champs, and none of the problems have to actually be fixed because all they have to say is back-to-back champs. It's a strange silver lining regarding U.S. soccer as the, uh, from the federation standpoint because the women are demanding change. The men are man- demanding change. The fans, the players are demanding change. The coaches are demanding change. The entire structure of U.S. soccer is flawed, but we're back-to-back world champs, and that's going to sit in front of those flaws for a while. And whether or not we actually get change within, I am skeptical. Incompetent. It's... Uh... I I don't know, man. I I I have to disagree. I think the growth of the domestic game is important. Like I I, I genuinely I genuinely do. Like you you want to build that foundation so you can get those players to play in America. Because look, it's look. Sometimes you get okay. Look, if they go to Europe, for example, it's very difficult for you to watch one of those one of those games in Europe. From like you know like for me like for example, if I want to watch it in Europe, it's very it's very difficult. It's good. You're gonna have eyeball. You're not gonna have eyeballs on there. I mean, the NWSL is free on like Yahoo Sports. If you really wanted to, you could find it with ease. I I feel like you need the domestic to grow yes, so you have a connection Armand, with some of these players. But Armand, we're missing the point. It's whether or not U.S. Soccer, the NWSL, are competent enough to realize that, and that's the problem. It's got nothing to do. Well, I with assume the... they. Well, they they are. They are competent to realize. Okay, we need to fix it up. The are, they, are they competent? What, what have no, no, they no, done? No, they are. They are. Are they competent to actually do it? That's the problem. Obviously, the league needs to grow. I think we know that. Obviously, they secured a couple of deals here or there. We know that. The thing is, are they going to make the right steps to actually grow the game and uh, and actually grow it in a sustainable way? Shoot, maybe you should give Don Garber the keys to NWSL. If he can grow MLS the way he is, maybe he can grow NWSL. I don't know. Maybe have them. Maybe have them in conjunction with each other. Have MLS run teams like what they do in Mexico. Have them run uh, female teams as well. That's worked out pretty well for Mexico. Their final average is thirty, forty thousand. I don't know. Just, just, just a thought that you know, maybe it's a temporary solution that they could do. But I, I, I just don't, don't have the faith in U.S. soccer to actually make changes. I really don't. That's my problem. Is that I have not seen a a, a will from anywhere in U.S. soccer to make drastic changes as a whole. Not to get sidetracked, but look what's going on with FC Cincinnati and MLS. Guys, I think as long as soccer is the most popular sport amongst little girls today, I don't think the women's side has anything to worry about in terms of talent development and interest. Right, but we're talking about the domestic game. I think that's the problem. Here, Jake, I, I think you raise a, a good point. When it comes to, to talent development, the U.S. is fine. That's not the worry. It's whether or not the domestic league can grow, whether or not we can get butts in seats, whether or not we can grow the league to more than a handful of teams, whether or not that we can grow a league that encompasses more of an international game to allow other countries to, to compete on the world stage and get that World Cup to 32 teams like the men's game is at. Think about what MLS has done for CONCACAF nations. Huge. Massive. Can we do that with the NWSL and get more CONCACAF teams up to par and competing so you don't have a World Cup 
where the remaining eight teams, seven of them are from Europe, and one the other one's the U.S. Well, then I will we'll have to see what this World Cup win does for domestic football in this country. We'll have to see what the investment of ESPN and Budweiser into the NWSL does for the league as a whole uh, over the next couple of years. But I want to read one more fun fact here before we sign off for the day. Carly Lloyd's sub on in the 87th minute marked her 25th appearance in the FIFA Women's World Cup, tying her for second all time in U.S. women's national team history with Abby Wambach. Christine Lilly has the most with 30 appearances. So there you have it. Maybe it's a little bit more investment. I, Iron we'll Woman. Have more, maybe Iron we'll have more. Right color. Yeah, Iron Man. Iron Woman. Bleacher <laughs> Report. Yeah. Well. Questionable murals. <laughs> Iron Man, man. Come on. Jeez. <laughs> Listeners, if you don't know what we're talking about, Bleacher Report decided it would be a smart idea to have the most random American celebrities in a mural with the U.S. Women's National Team. Iron Man. Oof. Hey, Iron. we're talking about it. We're talking about it. It was a great, great marketing on their part. Yeah. Listeners, we're giving our instant reaction following the U.S. triumphant win over Holland 2-0 in the World Cup final. Fantastic match. It was a great game. Great spectacle. Fans were in it. The Dutch fans were in it. The entire country was behind the U.S. women. We'll have more coming up this week. Lots to get to, obviously, at the Gold Cup final. Listeners, at Unc Sam Soccer Pod, at Jake Wotroba, at Armand Kafai, at Steven Jodder, and send in your thoughts. How happy are you this Monday morning after a back-to-back World Cup? Question of the day. What does it mean going forward for the sport? Until tomorrow.